Welcome to the Solid Signal podcast for the week of July 31st, 2023. And this is going to be one of those podcasts that is drawn a little bit from my own personal experience. And I think that there's a real tie-in to the world of satellite television and antennas and a lot of the other stuff that we offer at SolidSignal.com. But in the end, this is part of my experience. It's part of what has happened in my life the last couple of days. And it's something that I, therefore, want to share with you, my podcasting public. Over the weekend, I had the opportunity to watch the uh, Red Sox versus Giants game on Fox. Uh, it was aired nationally on uh, on the Fox network. And and I have to say, it, it makes me very grateful to have uh, the MLB Extra Innings package on DirecTV, to have MLB.TV available for streaming, because I did watch this on broadcast, and it made me realize and remember exactly why I don't like watching stuff on Fox and just to a lesser extent ESPN. ESPN has the same issue uh, as Fox in this regard and it all comes down to the technology. I'll get to that in just a second. I don't want to say anything negative about the folks at Fox who work very hard to put on a good broadcast. Uh, after all, these are some very hardworking people who are probably doing a better job than I could ever do uh, in every single one of the tasks that they take on. That said, um, I'm a little bit less uh, pleased with the commentary that comes out of the, the Fox commentators. This is going back many years. I think this year is actually better than in past years, but I just don't feel like it has the same depth of understanding that we've seen uh, on other channels, especially regional sports networks, when I watch games on one of those. But that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the technology. Both Fox and ESPN use 720p broadcasting. What does this mean? 720p broadcasting is a resolution of 1280 by 720, as opposed to most channels, whether they are over the antenna or through uh, through cable or satellite or even uh, on, on streaming, use a resolution of 1920 by 1280. Obviously, just if you pay attention to the numbers, you're going to realize that 1920 by 1280 is a lot more resolution than 1280 by 720. And the reason why this all happens goes back really 20 years, uh, and, and it goes to the technologies that were available at the time and what people thought was going to be possible when we all transitioned over to high definition. Uh, back in the 1990s, when high definition was largely a theory in the United States, there were two competing factions as far as what we should be doing when we broadcast in high definition. One faction said that we should be doing a resolution of 1280 by 720 with a refresh rate, in other words, a number every time the things actually change, of 60 frames per second. While the other group thought that we should be doing a resolution of 1920 by 1080 with an interlaced broadcast signal that gave us half frames, it gave us a half of a frame every 60th of a second instead of a full frame, the net being that what you really get is 30 frames per second. At the time, it was not thought that you could do full frame 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second using a regular broadcast channel. And remember, at this time, everybody was really very focused on antenna stuff. Streaming didn't exist. Cable and satellite were relatively young at that time, especially satellite. So the thought was, if you really wanted to get that high refresh rate, which was considered really optimal for fast motion, things like sports, then you wanted to have that resolution of 1280 by 720. If, on the other hand, you wanted a really beautiful looking picture that didn't move as fast, and, you know, for example, for regular motion pictures and things like that, that you would use this 1920 by 1080 at a net of 30 frames per second. So both standards were eventually adopted for use in the United States, and broadcasters were given the choice of whichever one that they wanted to use. And for the most part, ABC television stations went with 720p, ESPN, because it is part of the Disney ABC empire, also went with 720p, and Fox went with, with 720p as well, and pretty much everyone else went with 1080i. 
A quick backtrack for a second. The P and the I part stands for progressive and interlaced. And when I say that, it's what I mean is 60 complete frames per second versus 60 half frames per second, netting out to 30 full frames per second. And the P and the I part isn't really the, the point of this entire podcast. It's just you might be wondering as I'm going out and saying it. Well, back then, 1280 by 720 seemed like about all we might need for high definition because back then a big television was 40 inches. And, you know, you probably couldn't tell the difference. My first high definition television was a 37 inch TV and it was a 720p TV. That was the highest resolution it got. And I thought it looked great as a matter of fact. But of course, today, a 40-inch television is one of the smallest ones you can get. And as a matter of fact, it's hard to even find one that small unless you are going to go into the kind of the lower-end brands. So today, obviously, I've got a TV that's a lot larger than 37 inches, and I bet that you do too. My TV is 4K, and I bet that yours is too. And when you get up to watching stuff on a larger TV, it becomes incredibly, incredibly obvious how bad... 720 resolution is how everything is just blocky and blurry and how you can see big chunks of mosquito noise everywhere and and how it's really just not that good of of an experience and yes you've got these TVs with advanced scalers that do the best they can to bring the resolution up to something that's acceptable and they're all scaling up to to full 4K and that's okay it's just that the source material isn't that good. And that's a shame. It's a shame because today we could be putting out stuff in much higher resolution. And and the secret of all of this stuff is that in almost every case, I can't say it was in, in this case, but I, I got a feeling it, it was, in almost every case, stuff is originating in either a 1080p, that is 1920 by 1080 with 60 full frames of resolution, or full 4K. That's how it is actually being produced and it's being sampled down to 720 so that it can be broadcast at that resolution. So the high quality stuff is there. If you don't believe me, then watch something that is originally aired on Fox, but watch it on Hulu or something like that and you'll see that the quality of the Hulu feed is generally much better than what you see on Fox because what you're getting on Hulu is either the 1080 or the, the 4K source that has always existed and it got sampled down to 720 for broadcast. I realized this a couple of years ago when I was re-watching an episode of Dancing with the Stars on Hulu and realized how much better it looked than the live broadcast. And as a matter of fact, the, the uh, version of Dancing with the Stars that aired on Disney Plus was really, really good looking, uh, even though it was also being produced live. I think it's time to really talk about why we still have 720p and why we continue to have 720p. One of the reasons that we still have 720p broadcasting in the United States is that we all probably thought that by now we would be into the next generation of television, ATSC 3.0. And that would allow us to broadcast in 1080p, 60 frames a second, or in 4K if that's what we want to do. And it would be all new equipment anyway. So it didn't make sense to just upgrade anyway to go to, to 1080. It just for, you know, a couple of years or something like that. Also remember that when you're talking about ABC and Fox, these broadcast networks are getting all of their content from a single satellite that is shooting everything up and down at 720p so that even if the individual station is broadcasting in 1080 resolution, it's still getting 720 resolution from the satellite. And a lot of times that means that the signal looks even worse than it would if it were 720 the entire time because it's think about it this way, it's being produced in 1080, then it's being sampled down to 720, then it's being sampled up to 1080, and then it's being broadcast and it's being shown on a 4K TV. Every time you change the sampling and the scaling, you're losing a little bit of quality. Still, if you read the Solid Signal blog, blog.solidsignal.com, you know I have my hesitation when it comes to the next generation of broadcast television. I'm all for it, by the way. I think it's a great idea. Uh, not for the reasons that broadcasters want to do it. They want to do it so they can serve you 
more advertising, but I think it should be done because it will allow you to do things like actually watch TV in a moving vehicle, which you used to be able to do in the 20th century, and you can no longer do. But I have my doubts as to whether or not it will actually be implemented. We are here in 2023, really not much further ahead than we were in 2017, and we are now at the point where we have to expect that full adoption of any new broadcast standard would be 2028 to 2029 at the earliest, and who knows what's even going to be possible or happening by then. Um, it's just moving too slow, and I think that it will never be able to catch up. It will never be able to get where it needs to be. Um, and I think we're better off staying with the broadcast standard that we have now because if nothing else, it works. And, in, and if you go to kind of change people over to a new broadcast standard, you're going to push a certain number of people away from broadcast and they're never going to come back. All that said, I could see some sort of model for moving ABC and Fox over to 1080. Doing it for ESPN is practically a no-brainer since that's a cable and streaming operation, and so all you'd need to do was change over to 1080 on the satellite, and that would be it. But I think it should be done. I think it's time to say goodbye to 720p once and for all. I think it's time to say that 720p was a good idea for the technology that was there. It's just not necessary anymore. Anyway, that's it for the Solid Signal podcast for this week. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, and comment anywhere that you get this podcast. Always makes me look good to my boss. Um, we will see you again next week on the Solid Signal podcast. But until then, shop at SolidSignal.com. They sponsor this podcast. I'm very grateful that they do. Or if you need the ultimate in white glove service, call Signal Connect at 888-233-7563. That's 888-233-7563. Until next week, have a great one.